Hey love bugs, it's Rosalind back at you one more again. I hope everybody is doing blessed. I'm doing blessed and highly favored and definitely hope the same for you. And if this is your first time stopping by my channel, much love to you and welcome. And to my returning subs, my growing extended beautiful family as always. Thank you so much for the love and support. It is truly appreciated. So with that being said, much love to all. Namaste, love and blessings, love and light. And many blessings are definitely coming your way. And if you have been uh, watching my videos for a while and have not already, please drop a line. I would love a chance to get to know you as well as you're getting to know me and the video I'm about to do is called twin flame 101 hey Oka's the exact tragedy struggle or painful event showed you shows you you hold the hidden blueprint to conquer all that comes your way it's true you know uh, uh, you know they always it's just like when you're in that that negative Nancy you know you your own narch nemesis whatever you want to call it <laughs> you know you in that pessimistic uh uh prison vibe that you have you know a lot of times people are like you know bad times don't last forever and you're like hell oh, fuck off you know you ain't ready to just flip a finger out and it's true you know it's showing you where where you know and we can put our weight of of thought or our heart in in, in hurt on so many different things that didn't unpan the way we thought it was you have to be at that vibration of where something has to be coming better than that. You know, it could be a person that you thought uh, that was supposed to be the love of your life. Come to find out, you know, you don't dodge the major bullet like a whole tannin bomb, you know. And that person was there to show you what love isn't, what, what you know, what love should be. You know, all these different things. They were, you know, you're prepping for that. You know, it even told me, uh, Universe talking about, even when you have uh, false twin flames. You know, um, twin flame vibrations can be very heavy. It can be very challenging, but it's never supposed to be negative. Like, um, like uh, your 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 twin flame is supposed to hurt you. You know, you twin flame. Um, you know, we go through those different events where it feels like they're ghosting us. But you have to understand, you know, especially if they're still living. You know, um, they're on their vibration of healing too. So a lot of times they won't be able to connect with you 24-7. But that doesn't mean that they're, you're not on their mind. You are that, that main reason why they're allowing themselves to change. There are so many different things that we have changed ourselves for. But when you see that person got you making rearrangements in your whole lifespan. And certain things that you wouldn't even change. You know, you, you wouldn't even change the corner for, for somebody else. You know, but these are the things you don't realize when you're making that change for that person and you love them that much. You don't realize you're making that change for yourself. You know, so these are the things that showing you, you hold the blueprint that's saying that you can conquer everything that comes your way. You really don't know that because a lot of times we'll be stuck on it and really trying to allow ourselves. You know, sometimes we can be stuck on on that vibration of what has happened, what has been done, what has been said, what we feel like certain things should have been like. You know, and it's just like sometimes healing can look trivial. Sometimes you feel like, I don't know how I'm going to get myself around this. This is like, I didn't expect for it to come this way. I didn't, you know, I didn't expect for me to come this far for this to take place in my life that really just threw a monkey wrench in my whole program. Not realizing this is probably preparing you for something more. You know, you never really realize some of the things that, you know, this is how they discover a lot of things by accident. <laughs> you know, it's like an accident on purpose. It is just like how the different things that happen in that way. It reminded me when they said that about Lazarus Project. I think that's Lazarus Effect. I think that's that movie with Julia Rod, uh, Wild in it. And um, that dude from Creep, Creep, Creeper. That dude just made my skin crawl. Every time I seen him, all I seen was the Creep. You know, I'm like, hey, ain't never watching that movie. That's just like Human Centipede. I'll never watch that movie again. That's just, mm -mm. there's just certain things I just can't watch. But. It's just like sometimes you don't realize sometimes that tragedy can be a beautiful tragedy. You know, it's like how can a beautiful, it's just like that's an um, oxymoron or whatever they call that. It is. A lot of times you don't know the beauty in that tragedy can sit up here and, and create something unimaginable. You know, um, it, it's just like when I see different things that I've gone through in my life. And it's like, even though I went through something so tragic, I'm seeing the beauty of, of, of myself that's unfolding. I never knew that was there. If I would have looked about, probably about five or six years ago, or even seven years ago, somebody would have told me I'd be doing what I'm doing now, I'd be busting out laughing. You telling me I'm sober? 
You know, oh, you tell me I'm sober. I'm just loving life where life is loving me. And you would have told I'm like, man, whatever you smoking on, you need to give it to me. You know, because I, that's not happening. You know, and now it's just the fact is I love what I do. When I know I can impact somebody's life, you know, I love when I can get comments saying, Rosalind, you got me choked up on my own, on my own happiness, or you got me, you know, you crying because it allows me to feel the things that you're, you're, you're speaking. I'm seeing that in my own life and it's allowing you to fold that way, especially if you've been living miserably. You know, day by day, and you're really just trying to, you want to be happy. But there are so many different things in your life that wants you to stay in that sad vibration. That is the ego. That is your old you. You are manifesting a new you, and that mess is uncomfortable. And you are, you have to understand, you hold a blueprint to get over anything that is coming your way. You have to go through that to get to that. And that's the reason why things happen that way. You find out so much about yourself. You know, if you keep going towards different things that you never venture out by trying something new you will never understand where your zen is it's just like um where i used to tell people you know when they're always like rosalyn i'm so tired of being alone i don't know how you can do it you know because I, I haven't submitted to no man no woman nothing you know except myself you know for six years you know and i never thought i would be able to do that because i was very promiscuous back in the day as i always felt like everything was based i i can solve every problem just by having relations and that's you know that was the key to every every cure you know everything that i went through that was the cure and then when it got to that point where i see that was more of a problem to me than a solution i had to allow myself to stop you know there's too many things out here in the world it just seems like the energy that people carry is worse than something like a sti or a std or hiv or anything that is permanently that that it keeps the give a gift that keeps on giving you know because there's a lot of people out here that will just give you something just because the fact is they feel their life is failing so i want to give it to everybody else so it's like welcome to the worldwide of aids or whatever you know there's people out there are really like that there's some people that are activists but there's some people that are just infecting a lot of people and just don't care because they feel like their life is over i've seen it you know so it, it's just like when those different things and i tell them you know i when i talk one-on-one -on -one with people and i tell them you don't think i don't like sleeping by myself i said but it's just the whole point i'm not gonna welcome something in that is not worth my worth you know, I'm not going to welcome something in that I'm going to lose my, my ability to look at myself in the morning where I lost all self-esteem, all self-respect, all self-love just because I laid up with somebody and it wasn't really nothing. You know, I tell people real quick, you can you, you can climb this by yourself. You don't need all the extra stuff because you don't know what you're welcoming into your energy. Your energy, your vessel is very sacred. You know, and a lot of times when you're jumping into stuff before it's too soon, that's, you know, all... All hell break loose in your life. And I tell people, stop submitting. And they be like, Rosalind, you know, this is that person for me. Yeah, okay. And I say, you healed yet? Well, that beside the point. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll be talking to you in a few. And I already know it's going to be somebody psycho. Or, you know, somebody was just really negative. Or somebody came into your life that was very narcissistic. And boom, next thing you know. And I'll tell people, if you are still going through that healing journey. After your last toxic relationship, th this is that time where they tell you, you got to go through that grieving period. You know, this is that time for you to learn what comes, you know, what do you bring to the table showing you are the table. I know what I bring. I know what I'm going to entertain. I know what I'm going to accept. I know what I'm not going to accept. I know what I'm not going to condone, condone. And I know, sure enough, know what I'm not going to entertain. What I don't have time for. Even though time don't exist, I'm not wasting anything in my presence that I know is going to be nonsense. I'm not going to do it. You know, and that's where you know there there is always somebody destined in your life that is just that gift from God. But you had to go through all those relationships to see what is not good and what's not, you know, what's good for you and what's not good for you. You had to be able to experience that. And that's the reason why these happen. This is that blueprint to get you towards your kingdom wife and your kingdom husband. You had to be able to go through those different things. But for you, you have to understand solving that is not by jumping to the next person or the next body. You know, it's like body snatcher. I'll be calling them body snatchers. You're doing that. And next thing you know, you create more of a problem than you did from the last situation. You added more weight to that. You know, because you want to keep jumping one one person or one person, one person. You know, into that. But then it's just like, you know, I tell people, I get lonely too, but I'm not going to bring somebody in my life that God didn't destined to be there. Because if I'm getting there because it's just like that person seems right at the time, and if it's like, you'll know when God has brought somebody in your life that's strategically designed for you and mine. 
you know, and that was the, that's going to be that whole is going to be the manifesto. You know, for your own blueprint. It's just like when you have gone through a tragedy. This situation was showing you the truth that was always there. It was waiting for a moment to be revealed to you. And a lot of times that mess don't don't digest that right. You know, you don't digest it right. I looked at my life and I knew there were certain things that was missing in my life. I knew something wasn't right about my life. And then it took death for me to understand what life was truly about. You know, and those are the things that when I found out, I went crazy. I went rage. You know why I didn't go crazy? Well, I lost my mind. And I had to go back and find it. If I don't lose my mind, I didn't know I, if I had the heart to be able to go through that. You know, and the, that's what led me towards what I'm doing now. You know, and then it's just allowing me to unfold. And I'm seeing the power that I hold within that. Because there'll be different things that I'm talking about. And it'll just be flowing. And I'm like, where is this coming from? It's like me, you know, connecting with my higher self. And it's showing me the things that I need to say. You know, different things that they're they're giving me a picture of that I have to project not just towards myself, but other people. Because other people are going through this too. And there's a lot of times we can go through stuff and be having us stuck and confused. And not understanding what it is. I mean, there's too many people that gave me emails, text messages, and stuff saying, Rousey, I've been going through stuff for years. it would be about three or four videos you done dropped. And it put total, it made total sense for things that I've been carrying around and just was so lost and confused about. And I appreciate that. And that lets me know I'm living throughout my purpose because, if, you know, I'm, I'm like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? You know, I'm not really seeing it. And then it was just like so many different people are sending confirmations where, it, you know, it made them feel a lot better knowing that there was other people out there that was going through the same thing that they're going through too. And you hold that blueprint that shows you what you can overcome. You know, a lot of times we fear that because we want to hold on to anger. We want to hold on to vengeance, resentment, you know, um, uh, you know, vengeance, whatever, you know, because that's where, you know, that's where that self of enemy, it comes in because we want people to pay for what they put us through. We want uh, them to feel what they put us through. But you have to understand the people that place that on you is already in their pain. There ain't no more pain you can add towards them because they were all, that's already there. That's the reason why it happened in the first place. You're showing somebody that pain don't, even though it didn't begin with me, it's going to end with me. Just because you placed this on my life don't mean that I'm going to define this as my life. Let me show you how I can flip the script and make this, this negative impact be, be a positive, powerful impact. You know, and you're showing other people that. You know, there's a lot of people out here that just... They're just waiting. They want for you to become their victim. You know, it's just like so many Michael Myers and Jason Voorhees and Freddy Kruegers and stuff out there. Candyman's and all that junk out there. You know, there's going through uh, that, that, that are narcissists, pessimists, uh, s s you know, sadists, masochists, all those different things. Because they're in that prison of pain and they're just wanting to suck out every vial of, of living peace out of everybody they can conquer. Because this is how they feel their own fire. You know, this is how they feel, feel their power. And not realizing this is just like you running fumes on an old battery that needs to be changed out. You know, even within ourselves, there's that battery needs to be changed. It's like when it's telling us it needs to be changed, it's in between the way we view things, how we do things, how we speak on things, how we see ourselves, how we see the other people, how we see um, the world. You know, are we allowing ourselves to be judgmental when we're judging our own self? We're criticizing other people by criticizing our own selves. You know, not being understanding. And it's like, how can you be understanding with somebody who's going around killing people and this and this and that? You have to understand. There's something about them. It's just like when I watch, um, you know, it used to, it, it, people I used to talk to, and it, it used to get fascinated by the way I see different things. And I said, this is how empaths are. We see things at a deeper detail that other people may not see. You know, that's why I used to love the, the show Numbers. And um, what was that show? I think, was it Numbers? Or the one with Shamar Moore on it, you know, with uh, the girl with the black hair. You know, she was like the golf chick. No, I don't think she was in that. That was uh, in, uh, in, in. It was it NSI or you know NCSI or something like that? But I forgot the other one with Shamar Moore in it, and the girl um, uh, Gomez or whatever her last name is, uh, Garcia. I forgot her name. <laughs> it was like she was in that too. But I used to love thinking about that. Where even like um, 
Velisca, the Velisca murders and stuff like that. And I said it's something about that that whoever that person is, they were scarred by their parents. Like there was something about them that it was ugly about them. And they said, Why you say that? I said, Because they covered up the mirrors. And then when they cover up the mirrors, they and then when they when they you know take somebody's life, they cover up the face. It's like why you do that? Because they don't want to hold guilt on what they did. And when they hold, when they cover up the mirrors, it's because they said they feel something very ugly about themselves. That's why they did something else. And they're like, damn, wait, where you get all that from? Just like the, you know, the uh, Ripper, you know, from back in the day. You know, what was it, Jack the Ripper? I told you, Jack the Ripper is uh, Janice the Ripper. I said, no, that was a female man. <laughs> there wasn't no dude. They're like, why do you say that? I said, because, I said, women are smart. You know, I would say women from Venus and men from Mars. And no offense to anybody that's a man that's saying that y'all stupid. But I said that woman, her husband cheated on her with a, a woman of the night. And that's the reason why she kept on hitting all those women up. And they made it look like it was a dude. And she don't got, I mean, she, she was living her best life because the fact that she getting away with stuff. And was laughing about it because the fact is they looking for a man when it was really a woman. They were like, wow, so that's kind of so, so it's strange. It's true. Yeah, just think about it. You know, this woman cheated. Her, she caught her husband cheating on her with a woman of the night. And she went off, started hitting off every woman of the night to remind her of what her husband did. She maybe didn't kill her husband, but she you know, sit up here and knocked off all them hookers. You know, and did all stuff like that. But it's just like when you broaden your, you know, my imagination goes like that. My mind goes like that. Because I've always been on like criminal profiles on different things, you know, because my life, where my life was and things that I want to do. Because I always wanted to be a forensic scientist and stuff like that. But until I seen all my mom, all the stuff that my mom went through, I was like, nah, that, that career don't want jump ship. I ain't about to do all that because I don't see my mom go through too much. And, and that was some stuff that I wouldn't wish on nobody to see. But... It was just the way my mind went. You know, I always watch forensic files. I always like the stuff on um, uh, Netflix and even Tubi when it has something to do about, you know, the, the true life crime of different things. And it's just like, it'll make me think like, how is their mind like that? How are they raised? You know, because a lot of times they feel like uh, serial killers is... is uh, Somebody who had head injuries. I said, baby, I had so many daggone head injuries, but I'm not over here knocking off everybody. Shoot, that's by choice. That's something they choose to do. Because I've seen too many people that got a lot of head injuries, and a lot of us as empaths, we got a lot of head injuries. Because the fact is that amnesia had to come from somewhere. And a lot of my stuff, I start remembering. The closer I heal, the more I start not just remembering what's going on in this life, but there's other lives as well. And then it's just like we're all walking gods of amnesia. There are certain parts of your life that has been forgotten for a reason. You, It was just like before we even signed contracts to say we're going to come here, we picked our birthday, we picked our family. We, we even picked the tragedies that we were going through. And I'm like, what the hell was I thinking? I promise y'all to kick my own. I would have grabbed myself like, no, don't do it. No, you're not ready. I would have straight Kevin Hart. Duh, uh-uh. We ain't about to do that. Because I've seen where this is going to go. And this is going to really be, this is going to affect you for a good minute. You know. And it was just like. You know that because it's like when you're in that spiritual being of yourself, you already know how to, you know, we, we, we are a whiz at science. We are a whiz of uh, figuring out different things. And it's just like you notice that, that you have this thing about figuring stuff out. Like if you, if you calculate, you like calculating a lot of stuff. That's with me, OCD, ADD. And it's just like you, if you're a part of the spectrum, it's just the fact is you're very smart to uh, will make some people look stupid. You know, and that's the reason why, because a lot of times, some people see people with special needs. I said, that's God's gift. They download the heck out of them before they download you. You got to think about that. If you have a child or a brother, sister, or whatever, you have a family member that is close to you that is on the spectrum. That is that hidden alarm for God, because I guarantee you, anytime you're going through changes, the person that's on that spectrum going to feel it before you do. You'll notice just like, if they're, they're calculating, they do certain things every you know a certain way every day then all of a sudden they flip like that oh prepare your, your stuff about to come in too because i'll add there would be different people i'll talk to my like, age hey, such and such and such start doing this thing rosin how do you know that because you about to feel it in a minute they said i said that's your silent alarm right there that's your extra blessing right there because that's guys they hold god's secrets and they were like i never heard nobody say it like that i never there was like a few people that told me you know that, that was a blessing for me to say that because a lot of people don't see autism as a blessing. And I said, you have to understand. Because see, I don't have children with autism. But it was like, 
And I asked God in the universe, I said, if you want me to speak on this, please let me break it down. Because I don't want to be talking about something I, I've never, you know, uh, have went through. So it's just for me to be able to have that that calculation of how can I break it down for me to even understand. I call it dumbitdown.com. You know, and I tell people, it's like, well, a person on the spectrum, their, their thought process is like a, uh, like a roller coaster. You know, got loops, twists, turns, this and this and that. When ours is just like a, a merry-go-round. It just goes around like that. But you have to understand, ours is a thought process. And there are certain things that still get stuck. Like, you'll, you'll have a thought. Like, it'll just come up and come back. It, it could be a dream. That you knew you were something supposed to remember. And all of a sudden, it just come up and then it leaves real quick. You're like, and it was something that was triggering you. There was something you were supposed to remember. You know. But with them... There, it just depends on what cognitive uh, uh, label, I don't like label, but cognitive label of, of what they're on. Because there's some that are, they're, they don't speak, some that are hyperactive, some that are just, you know, Asperger's. You know, there's some of them that has Asperger's that, is, that their intellect is just sky high. And it, it can get, and it, especially when we're going through these changes, they, they hit in top tier. So it's a lot of times, you know, their thought is like 10 million times stronger than what ours are. And you were blessed to have that in your life. Even though you may be going through like, Rosalind, I don't see this as a blessing because I'll I be chasing out my child. I'll be chasing out my uncle. This and this and that. But you have to understand, the, they can't express like we express. But these are a lot of things that, you know, you're, it's, it's like if you're wondering what's going on with you, pay attention to them. And that's what they're telling me. Pay attention to them because they will tell, they will reveal a lot of things to you that's been hidden that they is hidden in plain sight when it comes to them. And you know, and it would be, it, it sounds crazy because it's even my next door neighbor. Her son is, you know, like that. And I'll notice when he, when he's, you know, he um changes the way he does stuff. I'm like, oh yeah, there's something. There's gonna be a swift in the atmosphere. I'm like, why you know? I just know it's how he do stuff, and I'll barely see him. But when I know his energy speak to me before he do, and I'll feel it. You know, especially when you're very sensitive like me, you will feel different things. Even when you come in a room, you'll feel it, you know. So it's just like so many different things holds a bl blueprint on how something can be overturned, how things can be changed for your benefit when you're allowing yourself to move forward, you know. And it, it's just like it's us being able to have that courage. We have it, but there's a lot of times it's depending on what you are going through. You know, because it's like when I'm seeing it, I see a lot of people that are going through unanswered questions um, with uh, their family being missing or their family has uh, been taken early. We put it that way, you know, they're, they're not here, but they've been taken early. And you really, you know, and it's just like, Rosalind, I can't get through that. And I understand that. But there's some kind of way, you know, from even with my situation, when I think about my dad and stuff like that, there was something he had already promised to help me through. Even when he's not physically here, he's spiritually there with me every day, you know, and he helps me through a lot. And those are the things that I can really truly say is a blessing towards me that I can, um, I can deal with, you know, I can't tell anybody else from the next person on but I can talk about my situation and I know it's hard when you're going through something and it has to deal with grief of of, of a you know losing a loved one you know it's like you're holding that blueprint and it's just like that person has took that oath to be able to help you go through something that was very strategically tragic that they knew it was going to set you up in certain kind of ways. But these are those things that's going to be unfolding for you. And it's just the way that I see it when I just said that. It reminds me of that movie with Sandra Bullock called um, Premonition. You know, she was going through something every day till she had to finally understand what was that truth trying to tell her. And when I tell you that movie had me so choked up when I watched it. And it was like, it was beautiful, but it was something I'm like, man, I got to be prepared. You can't prepare yourself when you watch something like that. Because I loved, you know, I love me some Sandra Bullock. And every time I see old boy, you know, it was like Christian, um... Christian Troy from Goddamn on Nip Tuck. I was like his ass. You know, like his old narcissistic ass. But I love that show, you know. So I knew I had to watch it. But it's just like if I was to go through that, you're going through something that will seem foreign, but there's so 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 many different things. Like, um, 
you know what's going to happen, but it will seem foreign to you, but it will be like deja vu. And these are showing you the different things. You are having these things because you already know what you're already, you already have the problem figured out because you are the solution. You know, and that's what they're already telling you. You already know the problem out of that because you hold, you are that solution to be able to go through that. And these are the things you had to go through because for this to do, for you to have to go through that, you had to go through a, a shock of truth in some kind of way for you to understand who you were to the depths of your soul. And this is what it is because it's just like I was saying in the other video. You are being revealed. You know, everything is going down. Like if I go on these different empath platforms, like on Facebook or something like that, and I see hear many people say do you feel like something's coming or you feel that and a lot of people are like yeah it feels like evil it feels like this and i say yes because it is like in in your 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 core of you is something that you're automatically fearing because it's something that has not uh been revealed yet so automatically you're gonna think it's negative no this is a part of you that has been waiting to be able to show this is the re i mean in a way if you look back the pandemic was already showing that. And it goes further back. Because it's just like. Um, when I'm seeing it, it. It started back for a while. Like. All these masks. People passing away in, in large quantities. When I think about that. I think about 9-11. I think about Kobe. Bryant and Gigi. And all those nine people. Then Aaliyah. And nine people. You know. It was with hers. It's like when you start being a conspiracy theory. It was just like. Kobe died around Aaliyah's birthday. You know, he was in a helic. Uh, well, he was in a um, what what was it? He was in a chopper or whatever that was. He had nine people. She was in a jet. She passed away around his birthday, and she had nine people. You know, and it happened. Both of them happened around the weekend. And when those both of those tragedies happened, because Aaliyah was in a platform where a lot of people loved and cared for her. You know, it was like even with me. I was about to fight my friend at work because she tried to tell me that. I thought, I'm like, girl, this is not something to play with. That is my girl, you know. And that was it. And then it comes with Kobe. He was like a goat of goats. You know what I'm saying? It, it was like even people that didn't even watch basketball or even know that they were they were hit like people that watched every game that played every time you know they got ready to dunk they called Kobe and this and this and that and that rocked the socks off of the world where it impacted the world in a big way and after that happened with Aaliyah a couple of weeks later the 9-11 happened when after this happened it was uh, the pandemic, just like with the people in Miami when all that happened. Next thing you know, genocide happened. Next thing you know, well, I forgot what it, if it was the thing with the the, uh, the the fire in the ocean in Gulf of Mexico. That was Leviathan. They were trying to make sure they covered that up. And I tell people every time they have something like this, they they create something to make sure they can shadow over something else that may create a world panic. And all these different things. And you if you look at it, you notice that it hits tragedy next, you know, all this other stuff starts falling right behind it. And this is what's going on. You know, it's showing you different things, the shock of value where it's showing you where a world is, is being set up in different ways to be able to change stuff. And a lot of times it takes tragedy of, of losing somebody for that to happen. And it's just like with all these different things, you know, even when it was with Kobe, it was hard to even watch. I couldn't even be on, you know, um, on, on making videos for a couple of days because that hit me really hard. And it hit a lot of empaths really hard where people were like, what is that feeling? We feeling a dread today. And this is, you know, and this one people that was um, into uh, knowing Kobe like that or even into basketball. But you're feeling that anguish and pain of losing somebody that felt like a father to you, a brother to you, a best friend to you, all that. And it's not, you know, and it was sad because they spotlighted Gigi and Kobe, even though they're, you know, they're, there are people in celebrity status, but there was nine other people that passed away too. And these are all different things where, sad to say, this is the reason where reality tends to hit when if you really want to, you know, they say if you really want to get somebody's attention, you can't just tap them on the shoulder. You're just going to have to sock them in the face. And that's what, you know, world change of reality is doing to us. It goes through that. You know, so this is the things that's showing you the blueprint of what can create something out of something else. You you had to go through certain things, but it's showing you, you know, a moment of weakness will always guide you towards your strength. 
you know, and it's like no disrespect for anybody, you know, like towards Vanessa or uh, Kobe's family or anything like that. Because I do have high respects for them. Anybody who's lost a, a loved one, especially any kind of way like that, is very, you know, very, very sensitive. But it was just being able to use that as an example, you know, and I just have really a lot of respect for their families and stuff like that. But it's, it's just like when you sit back and you look at how things were around those events you start seeing how things just went you know it was an avalanche of different things that comes on but these are the different things that's happening personally in your life to where if there's something that's taking place you know it's showing you a lot of times things are going to have to hit you tragically for you to be able to understand how you can be able to alter your reality you know for the good or for the bad it's just up to you on how you choose to what route you choose to have so i hope you were able to resonate with the content of this video y'all if you are please drop a line i would love a chance to be able to hear you know your insight on that you know um if you've been watching me for a while and you haven't you know i would love to be able to get a chance to get to know you as much as you're getting to know me and um i leave all my contact information in the um, description box below as i always say you know it's all about spiritual networking being able to give you a deeper understanding about your path of purpose or if you whether whether you want to chant you know share something with me to get my insight on it you know i try my best to be able to help out from my experience or from what universe gives me to be able to help you out with you know i also leave my link to my podcast as well on there and if you ever feel generous enough to drop a donation, you know, the cash app address is there as well. You know, if you feel, um, if you're working on manifesting something into your life, please stay consistent with it and persistent. You know, it may feel like it's drawn out and it's just like it's not going to happen. Believe if you stay consistent and persistent with yourself, you never know how close you are to, you know, to that, 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 that flip that you about to open up towards yourself, you know, because it's like the enemy will make you want to give up today because they already know your blessings about to come in tomorrow. So you stay consistent with yourself. And even through social distancing, make sure you give out love, like positivity, words, by frequencies, you know, those things um, can really take you a long way and um, take other people a long way as well. And, um... I think that's why I already messed that up. I was like, even through social distancing, that's why I meant to say. Uh, it's like, make sure you give out love, like positivity, words, by frequencies. You never know how that can really take somebody a long way. And just for you doing that, it'll take you even further. And I hope you have a blessed day weekend. Be responsible at everything you do. And you'll see me on my next video. Much love. And wherever this is coming out at, because I don't know if this is going to come out today, because today's Sunday. But, you know, way YouTube works, this may be coming out Monday or Tuesday. So, I never know. Never know. Much love. Peace.